Okay, so we're gonna have a super quick lesson today. We're starting our fourth unit, which is covering stoichiometry. We've already covered some of these concepts in class before. Uh, so it is gonna seem pretty familiar to you, but I thought, you know what? Probably a good idea to start this whole online thing a little easier. Anyway, here's today's plan. We're starting unit D. Stoichiometry is the branch of chemistry that deals with investigating the relationships between reactants and products in a chemical reaction, and then using those relationships to make predictions about the quantities such as moles, mass, et cetera. Uh, so today we're just going to look at the types of chemical reactions. We've already looked at types of chemical reactions before, so this is going to be entirely review. Uh, and I also want to review balancing chemical equations with, uh, with you today. So in other words, by the end of today, you should be able to identify what type of chemical reaction you have, uh, as well as how to balance that chemical reaction. Uh, so just to kind of recall some things, first of all, there's six main types of chemical reactions that you learned back in Science 10. Uh, as well, of course, earlier in uh, chemistry 20. A balanced chemical reaction is the first step in success in stoichiometry. You must always start a stoichiometry question with a balanced chemical equation. So in other words, this stuff that we're learning right now, chemical equation balancing, super, super important. You won't be able to go anywhere without it. Uh, anyway, so the chart below describes the six types of chemical reactions. This, of course, is in page two in your booklet that I gave you. Uh, the first type of reaction is a formation, also known as a synthesis reaction. This is where two or more atoms combine to form a more complex substance. So in other words, you can have two or more reactants yielding just one product. Uh, then the other type is a decomposition. This is basically the same thing as a formation, just in re uh, reverse. So this is where you have a more complex substance. It's breaking into its more simple parts. So in other words, one reactant will yield more than one product. Uh, all right, the other kind we've looked at before are single replacement reactions and double replacement reactions. So a single replacement is where a single element replaces another similar element in a compound. So this is where you'll have two reactants in which one of them is an element and one of them is a compound, uh, yielding two products, one in which is an element and one of which is a compound. That's kind of what this image right here is showing. This is an image showing what happens if you put aluminum foil, so just plain aluminum, uh, in hydrochloric acid. So if you were to mix aluminum with hydrochloric acid, what happens is hydrogen gas gets released. That's what these bubbles are. So hydrogen gas comes out. Don't mind my pen here. It's just goofing up today. Uh, but hydrogen gas comes out. And then the other thing that gets formed is aluminum chloride. Now, aluminum has a positive three charge. So of course, if we're going to swap and drop this, we have to say it's aluminum with three chlorines, right? So in other words, this is a single replacement reaction. This is a single, I'm not even going to bother writing anymore in that single replacement reaction uh, because a single element is combining with a compound to form an element plus a compound. Now, hydrogen, of course, is weird. It doesn't exist totally on its own. It has to combine with another hydrogen, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, of course, we also have to balance this. So you could put a, I guess we need, uh, we have three chlorines here. I'd say we need two hydrogen, but we're going to have to do better than that. I think we'll have to put a two in front of this here. So we have six chlorines, which means we'd have to put a six in front of here and a three in front of here and then a two in front of here. So in other words, get a balanced equation going and then you're good to go. Uh, the other type, of course, double replacement reaction. This is where you have two compounds and similar parts of them. So in other words, the cations in those two compounds are gonna switch places to form new, uh, two new compounds. So again, this will look like two reactants, both of which are compounds yielding two products, both of which are compounds. Last two types of chemical reactions that you have to know are hydrocarbon combustion and acid-base neutralization. Uh, hydrocarbon combustion is the most predictable one of the whole bunch. This is just where you have a hydrocarbon combining with oxygen, which is O2 gas, and it will always create CO2 and H2O. Uh, in case you've forgotten what the hydrocarbons are, there's four in particular that we've really looked at, methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Uh, their formulas are respectively CH4, C2H6, C3H8, and C4H10. Those four hydrocarbons are ones you will be expected to remember. The other ones, of course, are a little bit heavier, so we don't really, don't really deal with them too much. Uh, but the idea is if you were ever to burn any of these, which means mix it with oxygen, it would always produce CO2 uh, and H2O. Uh, the other type of reaction that we just started looking at right before the lockdown uh, was acid-base neutralization. So this is where you have an acid which contains an H, right, an H ion, really. Uh, combining with a base, which is going to contain an OH ion, uh, and this will always produce water and a resulting ionic compound. Now, just in case you've forgotten, that resulting ionic compound we always called a salt. It doesn't have to necessarily be NaCl, so in other words, it doesn't have to be sodium chloride. It just has to be some form of salt, which is what forms when you mix an acid and a base. 
All right, we're going to do a few examples. These are on page three in your notebooklet. Uh, balance each of the following equations and determine what type of reaction is taking place. Personally, I think I'll do this part first because uh, I think it's a little easier to see that at first glance. Uh, this first reaction, we have iron mixing with H2SO4, which in case you're not aware, that's actually sulfuric, sulfuric acid. I don't even know why I'm bothering with this pen today. Look at what it's doing. Just by the way, in case you're wondering why the pen's doing this, I'm at the, the school right now and the school computer doesn't have like the right driver software or whatever to be using this. So I think it's kind of screwing up the pen a little bit, but no big deal. Anyway, so we're mixing iron with sulfuric acid and it's producing this right here, which I guess is iron three sulfide or sulfate, I suppose. Uh, and this is hydrogen gas. So what I would say is best happening here is since we're mixing uh, a metal with an acid, and then it's basically just taking that metal and putting it into what was in the acid and releasing some other thing, I think this would be best called a single replacement reaction. Right, so I think I think single replacement is probably the best word for this one. Uh, so we've determined what type of reaction it is. Now we have to balance this. Uh, so in order to balance this, we have to look at how many of each element we have on both sides of the equation. And sometimes this is a bit of a bit of a guessing game because sometimes it doesn't work the first time around. But my first observations are we have two iron right here, but only one iron here. So maybe I want to start by saying we'll put it two in front of the iron. Uh, and that balances our irons out. Then we see we have three SO4s, but we only have one SO4 here. So maybe I'll put a three in front of this one. Uh, and now we have three times H2. So we have six hydrogens here, but we only have two hydrogens here. So we can put another three in front of this here to balance it out. And if you go through it one more time, we see we have two iron, three SO4s on both sides and uh, six hydrogens on both sides. So this is now balanced as well. Okay, that one wasn't really all, all that bad. Um, sometimes they get a lot more difficult than this. We'll do the second one because the second one on there is a little bit more challenging. And then I'll leave you to do the rest on your own. So this next one, we have C2H6 plus O2 becomes H2O plus CO2. Well, I think hopefully you see that's a hydrocarbon plus an oxygen It's making water and carbon dioxide. That means this is gonna be what we call a hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon combustion. Okay, so we've identified the type of reaction first. Uh, next up, we have to try balancing this. And this is again where things can get a little bit weird. Uh, one thing I notice right off the bat is I have two carbon right here, but only one carbon here. Uh, so if I goof up, I can always erase this, but I'll start by putting a two in front of the CO2. So now my carbons are balanced. Uh, oxygen, I don't wanna deal with quite yet because there's oxygen in two places here. So I think instead I might wanna deal uh, with my, my um, hydrogens here first. But when you see our hydrogens, you'd say, okay, well, we have two hydrogen here, but we have six hydrogen here. So we have to put a three in front of this. But what screws that up now is notice we have two times two oxygens, which is four oxygen, but then three oxygens here. So seven oxygens in total on the right-hand side. I don't know if I'm talking any sense here. What I'm trying to say is we'd have an odd number of oxygens on the right-hand side. And we can't turn this using an odd number of oxygens. So I have to kind of go back to the drawing board here. Let's see if I can get my eraser going. There we go, sorry, it's being a little goofy. There we go, I've erased it. And back to the pen, there we go. So I kind of have to go back to my drawing board here. Clearly that wasn't gonna be good enough. So you usually just double it up. Here's what I'll have to do. How about I say I'll put four carbons on this side. If I put four carbons here, that means I need to multiply this one by two to get four carbons right here. That bumps me all the way up to 12 hydrogens on the left-hand side. Well, 12 hydrogens here and I've got two hydrogens here, which should tell me I need to multiply this by six. So now I have 12 hydrogens on both sides. And the good news this time is six times uh, one is six plus four times two is eight. So in total, I have 14 oxygens. It's an awful 14, but 14 oxygens on this side. That is now an even number of oxygens, which means I can multiply uh, O2 by something to turn it into 14. Well, clearly I've got to multiply that by seven because seven times two is 14. So now we should be balanced. So once again, just going through one more time, just to make sure we balance this properly. Two times two carbon is four carbon and four carbon here. So carbon is good. We have two times six, which is 12 hydrogen. Six times two, 12 hydrogen. So hydrogen is now good. And then seven times two, which is 14 oxygen. And then six oxygen plus eight oxygen is 14 oxygen. So oxygen is pretty good here too. So in other words, this right here is now balanced and we should be good to go. Okay, that was enough of me talking. That was a very short lesson today. Not all lessons are gonna be like this. Don't, don't, get, uh, don't get your hopes up. 
What I want you to do for practice though, is I want you to complete the rest of those balancing questions on page three. There's 11 of them in total. We've already done two, so that leaves nine left over for you to do. Uh, it's extremely important that we completely master this before we move on. So in other words, don't just glaze over this. Definitely give these an honest try. Uh, in particular, balancing these is really the main focus of today, not so much naming what type of uh, reaction it is. Uh, the answer key, by the way, I've already taken a photo of it and I posted it on Google Classroom underneath week one. So please have a look at that. Other than that, best of luck.